Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Tippy, and I'm a Senior Product Training and Support Analyst with FCC Ag Expert. Today in Ag Expert Accounting, I'm going to take you through setting up a new employee. Um, so to start with, we're going to go to Payroll, and we'll select Employees, and then we'll click on the New Employee button now. All of that seems really obvious so far, um, so probably not requiring a tutorial video, but I promise I'll be more useful as we progress here. Um, so uh, we have two kind of sides to the employee uh, setup screen. The first is kind of all the employee identification information, and that's on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you'll have everything to do with all the payroll details um, for that employee. So we'll start out by filling out the left-hand side, um, and we're going to call this new employee Andrea. And mm, I hate being obvious, but we're going to do it. And then one, two, three, four. Uh, Main Street is where she lives. And we're going to say anywhere. And she's in Saskatchewan because that's where I am. And we'll do SOG1CO as the postal code. Um, just in case you're wondering, um, I don't know Andrea Smith. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's one or two out there. Um, if you know her, I'm sure she's a lovely person. Uh, for phone number, we're going to go 306-555-1212, which if you've been around as long as I have, you'll remember that before the days of internet, that's what you used to go to when you needed a phone number. And we'll say uh, Andrea at gmail.com. Um, that's also probably a real email address. Um, but again, I don't know who that is. If uh, the, So language selection is going to determine what uh, language the, the payroll reports for this employee, like the T4 and everything print out in. Um, so we'll do English. If I had any notes about my employee that were just kind of private internal notes, I could put those in here. And then I always have that record. On to the right-hand side, uh, employee number uh, is not super important. Um, we're just going to use one here. If you have a large number of employees, um, it can kind of be a little helpful when you're when you're trying to organize um, or find an employee to use that employee number. Um, for most people, it's not going to be something you need to put a lot of thought into. Um, occupation pulls into a record of employment so I'm just going to say farm laborer and date hired uh, we are June 8th in the real world right now so I'm going to say I'm setting this employee up and I hired them at the beginning of May here so we're doing uh, getting ready to do the payroll for the month of May and I need this employee set up uh, for status you have three options uh, you have active, and then, of course, if they were going on leave, I could set their, their their status to leave. Or if they were leaving my organization, I could set their status to terminated. Either one of those last two will make the record of employment available as a report option for you. Um, pay cycle. Uh, you have five options here. Um, this will determine which tax tables are used to calculate income tax, um, as well as how it's grossing up the calculation or grossing up the salary for the calculation of CPP. So we are going to go, this is a monthly employee. Um, for vacation, you have three options. So you can say we're not paying vacation pay. There's not uh, every province where you're obligated to. Um, you can be sure to check with your labor standards branch to, to just make sure you're following your responsibilities there. You can pay out the vacation pay on each paycheck, or and then the employee is responsible to manage their own vacation pay, or you can retain that vacation pay, in which case the system uh, has a special account that it just puts all of that to, and we would then pay that out on vacation paychecks as the employee takes their vacation. I'm going to choose pay out vacation pay just because it's less fuss. And I'm going to say rate. Um, I'm not sure what the percentage is, but I know that I have to go three weeks in Saskatchewan here. So I'm just going to choose weeks. 
and my vacation expense account we need to set that I'm going to vacation um, all of your payroll expense accounts the, all the default ones all the basic ones will be in there normally you could go into your chart of accounts and take a look and just familiarize yourself I happen to know that 5100 is my arms length and 5110 is my non arms length as we already established I don't know Andrea so we're going to go ahead and say she is arms length and I'll select the 5100-07 as my expense account Accrued advances, um, if I had given an advance of $500 to Andrea to uh, help her relocate or um, to set up transportation or maybe buy some safety equipment that was required for the job, any reason that I had issued an advance on future pay, um, this is where I would put that uh, to start with and it's going to then allow me to take that off of the employee paycheck to re recover those monies. Um, once the employee has been created, you can just create an advance paycheck and it'll you'll advance the salary that way. You won't do it through this window. This is just used when setting things up. Uh, for a social insurance number, uh, you'll need to make sure that you're typing in a valid social insurance number here. There's math in behind the scenes that double checks that. Um, because I work in Ag Expert land, I will be able to do this one. one five, six, and uh, that'll allow me to bypass that little check. But that's not a valid social insurance number. So if, if Andrea was a real person and I wanted a T4, this would not work. Uh, date of birth. Let's say that Andrea was born about 20 years ago. So we'll just say she was born in 2000 and let's say she was a February baby. These next two boxes I'm going to talk a little bit about because there is some uh, specific information around these. Uh, your TD1 federal and your TD1 provincial claim amounts are the, they're a form that you fill out or that your employee fills out and submits to you to tell you how much exempt income they're going to be claiming. Um, and then it, it helps set the level at which we're go at which income tax will be deducted. The forms change every year, so we need to check those every year uh, for the beginning of January and for the beginning of July. It's not often that you see changes in July, but it does happen, so we do a check. Um, when there are changes to the tax tables, we do update the software accordingly, but we don't come in and update these automatically because we don't know what these are set to. So um, it is your responsibility as an employer to make sure that, that right amount is in there so that the income tax is deducted properly. Each of these is a link. The federal will take you to the federal TD1 claim and the provincial will take you to whatever province it is that you're working in the claim form for that province. A couple of things to note because there's some oddities that they've introduced in the last year or so. Um, for the TD1 federal claim amount, if the income is going to be greater than $150,473, um, what you'll want to do is use the online payroll deductions calculator to figure out what amount is needs to be put in there for every paycheck. Um, it's not convenient. I recognize that. Um, there's just no better way to work around this this exempt because it's it's variable once you get above that income level. Um, if you are in the Yukon territories, your provincial claim amount behaves the same. If your income is greater than $150,473, um, you'll need to use the, the online deductions calculator to figure out what this amount is going to be. And uh, if you are in Nova Scotia, um, it varies, um, it, the provincial claim amount varies based on whether your income is greater than or lesser than $75,000 a year. Um, so just something to keep in mind if um, you have a high salary earner, then, then of course it's going to apply to you for federal. If you're in the Yukon territories or in Nova Scotia and you have a higher salary earner, you're going to need to worry about that. For most of us, um, all we need to do is click on this link to get our form and the form will tell us what our basic personal amount is. Now I'm going to uh, zoom this in a little bit just so that it's a little bit easier to see on the screen. 
Um, normally I would give this form to my employee and my employee would fill it out and then submit it back to me and I would use whatever number they supply. Um, I am not obligated to chase down my employee to get this form filled out. If they do not return it to me, I can simply assume the basic personal amount, which is what we're going to do for Andrea. Um, and Andrea will, uh, because we're, she's going to be earning less than the 150000 our, her basic personal amount will be the 13229 So I'm going to go ahead and type that in here for the federal, 13229 And for provincial, we're going to click on the link for that one. And again, I'll just zoom in here so that we can read this. Um, same rules with the federal. Um, if we don't have one supplied by the employee, we just assume the basic personal amount. In Saskatchewan here, we have $16,065. So I'll go ahead and use that here, 065. And then that's good. For the um, WCB rate, um, if uh, you are participating in WCB or in your province, it might be Worker Safety Insurance Board, uh, WSIB in Quebec, it is C-N-E-S-S-T, I believe. Um, each one uh, has an authority, depending on what province you're in, that, that manages the, the safety insurance. And there's a website you can go to that I'm going to show you here right away, where you can just click to find out the contact information for your province for whichever authority employee is, be, is doing. Now, the website you want to visit, and I'll put this in the, um, because it's not linked within the program, I'll put this in the uh, description box of the video so that you'll be able to grab that for yourself. So here we are, and just right here on this map is a link for each province. Um, if you click on the province that you belong to, it will give you the contact information for the authority that you'll need to work with. And then once you know what that percentage is, you can enter that amount here. And we'll go over in a later video um, how to do the remittances for those. Um, the RSP and DPSP registration number, um, R, sorry, RPP, not RRSP. Um, so that is if you have a pension plan um, or a deferred profit sharing plan that has been registered with CRA, you can enter that registration number in here. That's going to be required for their T4s. And uh, we already established that um, Andrea was an arm's length employee. If she was non-arm's length, I would just toggle this. And then that's going to show me or affect what I see down here for pay types and things like that. So down into the bottom section of the right-hand side, which is all the little uh, bits and bobs of calculating a paycheck, um, you have pay types. Um, all the basics are there for the most part, including stat pay. Um, if there was a pay type that you wanted to pay, um, what you would do is you would click here and you would add that and then be able to select it. Now, uh, Andrea is an hourly employee, but I also want to be able to um, pay out a, a year-end bonus to my employees. So I'm going to add a new pay type called bonus here. Actually make it look more professional. Annual bonus. I'm going to select a, an expense account. It's just going to be the same where my salaries would go or my wages would go. Again, I know this is arm's length. This is not arm's length. So I'm just going to select this one here. And I'm not going to include that on vacational earnings because it is not a guarantee amount. It does need to be included on a T4 box, but it doesn't need to be included in a specific T4 box. So we just leave this blank. It will roll itself into where the rest of the remuneration for the employee goes. And I can click on save. So setting up a new pay type is just that easy. Um, I can now select annual bonus and that's in there. I'm going to say Andrea's hourly rate is 
$18.73 an hour. Um, annual bonus, I'm going to leave that as zero because I don't know what that's going to be until the end of the year comes along. Now, earlier we said we were going to be paying her vacation here, um, and we are going to be doing it in weeks. So um, I'm going to say we need to add vacation pay and that she gets three weeks because I know they're here in Saskatchewan after zero years. Um, I could have a number of different rates imply, applied to employees. So I could have, say, a, a loyalty bonus. Um, employees that have worked for me for greater than five years get four weeks, and I could set that all here. I would just click on add to add more. Um, for benefits, um, we're going to do a later video um, about adding some benefits in here. For Andrea, there's no real benefits included with the job, so um, other than, you know, getting to work for us. Um, so we won't be adding any benefits there. But deductions, we do need to add something in there because every employee has to get deductions. Now, she's arm's length, so you'll notice I have access to EI here. Um, if she was non-arm's length, um, EI should disappear. So we're going to choose CPP, and we're going to choose EI, and we're going to choose federal tax, and we're going to choose provincial tax. You'll notice there's one other deduction type there that's called additional federal tax. We would use that if on the TD1 form, if she handed that back to us, there's a spot there on the federal form for her to indicate an additional income tax deduction, and we would just set that using this one here. So that takes us all the way through um, setting up a new employee. All I do now is I will click on save and Andrea Smith is now in my employee list as employee number one and I'll be able to run payroll for her. And we'll cover that in a later video as well. Thank you very, very much for watching. Um, I hope I didn't keep you too long and that we went through things fairly quickly, but still completely. Um, if you have more questions, you can reach us by calling 1-800-667-7893. You can also visit our online community. We have discussions boards there. Um, we have a blog that we write regularly, and there's our knowledge base, which has a lot of helpful information. And of course, you can always email us, support at FCCAgExpert.ca. Thanks again, everyone. I hope you have a lovely day.